Hi guys, Techman here. The Solar and Storage Life Exhibition 2023, UK's largest renewable energy exhibition. Approximately 400 of the world's leading manufacturers of solar systems, solar technology and products held at the NEC Birmingham and with a staggering 15 to 20,000 visitors expected to flock here over three days, it was a show not to be missed for those in the industry and solar enthusiasts alike. It provides an excellent opportunity to connect with manufacturers, learn about the latest solar technology and forge connections. But what's it like to attend the event as someone interested in portable power stations? Well, to find out, I decided to embark on this journey and share my experiences with you. Before we embark on this solar infused adventure, I want to make a small disclaimer. My purpose for attending this exhibition was purely as an enthusiast of all things portable power stations. So while the event as a whole was a huge success, my focus was exploring the portable solar technology aspect of the exhibition and sharing my thoughts and experiences with you. In this video, I'm going to share my journey, some of the manufacturers I met and conversed with, and highlight the glimmers of brilliance, the shadows of disappointment, and my overall impressions of the exhibition based on a two-day visit. I want to emphasize that these are my personal opinions. And as with any subjective experience, they are influenced by various factors and experiences. And so it's important to remember that my intention is not to discredit the event or the exhibitors, nor is it to describe the experience of attendees with different interests and purposes. With that in mind, let's take a look at my journey to the exhibition. And no, I wasn't setting off on Mars. This is just a fancy CGI footage. Being an advocate for sustainable renewable energy and striving to reduce my carbon footprint, I consciously made the decision to travel using public transport. On the morning of the exhibition, I embarked on a series of buses and coaches to reach the illustrial NEC. This choice not only aligned with my ecological principles, but also happened to be more economical. The parking fees at the NEC were ridiculously expensive and overpriced, making public transport a sensible and pocket-friendly alternative. And so my journey began with a National Express coach to Birmingham city centre. Thanks boss, thank you. From there, I needed to catch the X1 bus to the International Railway Station, located near Birmingham Airport. But there was a problem. Despite the X1 being scheduled to run every 20 minutes, the 947 and the 1007 buses never arrived. This of course led to an unexpected delay, and I had to wait until the 1027 bus to get back on track. It was not the most auspicious start, but a valuable lesson learned. When travelling through the integrate web of public transport in the UK, it's always wise to allocate extra time. The reliability of our public transport system leaves much to be desired. Once aboard the bus which was packed with passengers, I eventually found a vacancy on the upper deck. However, fate had me sitting next to a young lad who seemed to be rather… stoned, shall I say. Nonetheless, I eventually arrived at the International Railway Station at about 11.05. It's worth noting that the station conveniently provides a link to the NEC. And finally, I found myself at the NEC for the very first time. On a side note, I must say the facilities at the NEC were commendable, boasting numerous food outlets, well-maintained toilets, and attentive staff ensuring smooth operation of the centre. However, my experience the following day was quite different. The place was absolutely bustling, hosting multiple exhibitions simultaneously, queues to form at toilets and food outlets, and people scrambled to find tables or any available space to enjoy their meals in peace. Anyway, let's return to day one at the Solar and Storage Live exhibition, which was now up and running at Hall 5. 
As I made my way to the entrance, I couldn't help but notice the long queues of people anxiously waiting to register and receive their lanyards. Fortunately for me, I had come prepared. Prior to the actual opening, all attendees received an email with their personal badge, which you could print at home yourself, allowing you to skip the queue. And just like that, with a quick scan of my badge, I was granted swift entry into the event. You're a smart guy. Clearly picked up some flashy tricks. Now, I won't bore you with a detailed account of every interaction and observation from the two days I spent at the NEC. Instead, I'm going to highlight some of the prominent manufacturers in the portable solar technology world. My first stop was Bluetti, a renowned name in the industry. They showcased the latest AC 180P power station and other units like the B500 modular pack. However, engaging with the staff proved to be a challenge. Language became a barrier and they struggled to fully understand most of what people were saying. Now, to be fair, this issue wasn't limited to Bluetti alone. I encountered this problem throughout many stalls. An overall lack of understanding and effective communication. But I'll touch upon that a little later in the video. Despite the communication challenges, it was still nice to see an array of Bluetti units on display and have the opportunity to inspect them in person. Although I have yet to try or own these larger units, I did do a review of the EB55 on my channel. If you're interested in that review, the link can be found in the description. Moving on, my attention turned to the EcoFlow stand. Unlike my encounters with Blue Eti, the language barrier was not a significant issue here. Nonetheless, I took the opportunity to raise a pressing concern. The lack of after-sales support from EcoFlow. Many of you have reached out to me sharing your own experiences and frustrations. And some of you may recall the customer service experiment I conducted last year. Link is in the description if you haven't already watched that video. Alright, so I just spoke to the guy about the, um, some of the poor customer service that EcoFlow have provided to UK and EU and US customers. And this guy has been friendly, he's asked me to get in touch with the PR manager who's on his way here. And to address this concern, I was introduced to Lorna, the head of communications for EcoFlow in the UK and Europe. She kindly agreed to address these concerns, and I will be sharing this interview in a separate video. So stay tuned to the channel for that. Now, the EcoFlow stand itself proudly displayed their home user kits, including their impressive Power Ocean all in one setup, which truly captured my attention. It was great to witness the entire setup firsthand and have the opportunity to inquire about its various features. In addition to the larger setups, smaller units such as the Delta Max were on display. However, to my disappointment, the Delta Pro series was nowhere to be seen. And then there was the Leox stand. I caught a glimpse of some of the newer power stations that, I must confess, bear a striking resemblance to a well-known brand that I shall not name. However, much like my previous encounters, I found myself once again trying to converse with someone who struggled to communicate effectively in the English language. Fortunately, things improved when I returned to the stand the next day. On this occasion, I had the pleasure of meeting Kin, who was able to converse better and answer my questions. He agreed to do a short promotional video on camera, although it did require a bit of convincing on my part. I'll be sharing that short interview in a separate video as well, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel. My next encounter was with the Yunnan manufacturer Zender and their much hyped super base units. My presence was noticed by two members of their staff. However, they showed little interest in engaging with me or initiating a conversation. But then fate intervened, and a third member of staff emerged from the shadows, breaking through the barrier. We delved into various topics, including the apparent lack of Zender products and marketing in the UK. He explained that Zender's targeted market within Europe primarily lies in Germany, which left me with a twinge of disappointment. However, we managed to have a delightful discussion on power stations in general, exchanging insights and thoughts on how they could shape up in the future. Last but not least from the big players in the portable power station world, there was the Anker stand, now rebranded as Anker Solix. I couldn't help but be impressed by the strategic placement of their flagship units. Anker truly knows how to captivate attention. I caught glimpses of their latest units, such as the newly released C1000. And of course, the F3800 power station, which Anker Solix is currently crowdfunding. While there were other power stations and products to view and admire, once again, the staff showed little interest in approaching the half a dozen visitors that were present. But once again, my fortune was better the following day. 
This time I met the PR manager of Anchor Solix, who was much more welcoming. We engaged in conversation and discussed my experiences with portable power stations. She sought my input on potential areas of improvement, while I eagerly inquired about Anchor's ambitions for the future. Now this wasn't the first time I had communicated with an Anchor Solix PR manager. Just a few weeks before the exhibition, I received an email from their top PR manager. Want to know more? Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, all shall be revealed in an upcoming video on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Before we conclude, a few notable mentions that I'd like to mention in this video. Firstly, VTAC, a well-known company within the lighting industry. Their marketing manager graciously spared some time to showcase their power stations, and even joined me on camera for a brief chat. Stay tuned for that video on the channel. Moving on, we have Night Searcher, another prominent player in the world of lighting. Their power stations were impressive, designed with durability in mind, and also boasting an IP rating that ensures they can withstand the rigors of outdoor use. We'll dive deeper into their power stations in a future video on the channel. And then we have Growwatt, known for their expertise in solar inverters and innovative solar solutions. It was a surprise to see their venture into portable power station market. Though personally, I think the appearance of these units could do with a little tweaking. Decent, but hardly spectacular. There were several other power station companies at the event too, like Zonergy for example, whose power stations exhibited striking similarities to those offered by Bluetti. Another was REE or RE, a group of approachable and friendly individuals. Among them was a young man who visited the UK for the first time. His vibrant personality shone through as he voiced his opinion on the state of Birmingham streets, adding a touch of humour to our conversation, I must say. He commented on the city's pollution and general lack of cleanliness, while also expressing sympathy due to the local council's unfortunate declaration of bankruptcy. Cheeky. We discussed other notable brands, such as EcoFlow, Jackery, Bluetti, and All Powers. He cited how these companies are all based in Shenzhen, a hub of innovation in China. What's truly fascinating is that they not only know each other, but also utilize the services of a couple of manufacturers and developers, all nestled within the same quarter of Shenzhen. This so-called interconnection of the industry is something I had previously read online, but hearing this from someone within the hub itself was truly interesting. Other companies include A-Power, who showcase their 1 kilowatt hour and 3 kilowatt hour units. Dinis or Dynis, another brand who had these units on display. They asked a lot of questions and sought advice on how to improve their units. Sadly, despite their eagerness to learn, they were reluctant in providing me with a unit for evaluation and feedback on the channel. Numerous other companies graced the exhibition, each with their own distinctive units. However, a common hurdle we faced was the language barrier. Communication proved to be a recurring challenge, hindering our ability to fully explore the potentials of these power stations. Furthermore, it became apparent that the majority of these companies had little to no stock within the UK, EU and US markets. In fact, their intentions to expand beyond the borders of China seemed slim, if not non-existent in the foreseeable future. Now, I want to keep this video as concise as possible. I've cut out and filtered many clips. And in doing so, I plan to upload separate interviews and individual mentions on the channel. You've heard me say that a few times today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what do I think of the Solar and Storage Live 2023 exhibition? First and foremost, the event was truly exceptional, offering a multitude of opportunities to explore, with multiple networking prospects and chances to forge valuable partnerships. It was an ideal platform to connect with some of the biggest names in the solar industry. There were giant solar panels on display, like this remarkable 720 watt panel. I had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman from Pylon, a dynamic software company specializing in solar designs, and learn about their software's capabilities in building the perfect solar installation tailored to individual needs. The exhibition also provided insight into tools and equipment essential for meeting the energy demands of today. Seeing these cutting-edge solutions in action was both informative and inspiring. There were speeches on solar energy solutions and valuable insights from industry experts. There were numerous companies presenting energy storage solutions, ranging from server rack batteries to all-in-one solutions. Notably, a significant number of companies venturing into solar EV charging. The diverse array of products and solutions demonstrated the industry's commitment to sustainable transportation. 
there was even an F1 simulator present at the exhibition. I mean, how cool is that? In conclusion, the Solar and Storage Live 2023 exhibition proved to be a remarkable experience. I will say the event seemed overly crowded due to the sheer number of exhibitors present, sometimes leading to attendees tripping over and bumping into fellow participants. But it did not overshadow the overall organization or success of the event. The exhibition fostered innovation, learning and networking, providing a platform to connect with industry giants, the opportunity to witness cutting-edge technology and explore limitless possibilities of solar energy. But from the perspective of portable power stations and their manufacturers, I was left feeling somewhat disappointed. Now you might think perhaps my expectations were too high, but my disappointment stems primarily from the conduct and communication of some of the exhibitors, rather than the event as a whole or its organization. What left me disheartened was the language barrier that hindered communication with many of the portable power station companies. Numerous staff appeared to struggle with English, making it challenge for everyone, not just me. Moreover, there were instances where certain exhibitors displayed a complete disregard for potential customers. One such incident involved Ultramax, a company whose batteries I personally use in my 24 volt setup. And these batteries have featured on my channel in the past when I used them to test the charging capabilities of the Leoc unit. Another example was an encounter with a representative who was discussing the specs and application of these blade battery cells. To my disbelief, he abruptly interrupted our conversation to take a video call from his family back in China. Not only did this demonstrate a lack of professionalism, but it also showed a complete disregard for the people standing behind me waiting to engage with him. It does not look good. A number of companies showed little interest in stocking their products locally or catering for the needs of potential customers. The list of disappointments go on and it greatly detracted from the overall experience. And after embarking on a two-day journey to Birmingham for the conference and a relatively positive experience on what was my first attendance at this event, of course dampened by the disappointments I've highlighted, it was time to bid farewell to the exhibition and return home via the economical and ecological mode of public transport. And as I made my way home, I couldn't help but reflect on the purpose of attending such an event. If your sole interest is to explore portable solar technology, it may prove to be a potentially disappointing trip for you, especially if you're traveling from a considerable distance. My experience would have been more rewarding had these companies been engaging and employed local staff and volunteers or at the very least, people who can converse fluently in the English language. And as I wrap up, I want to remind you that I will be uploading more content from the exhibition soon. So be sure to stay tuned. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for devoting your time to listen to my experiences. Your support is greatly appreciated. Right guys, as always, stay safe, stay green, and I'll catch you in the next one.